Hello everyone, it is I, Zyap Guy. We've all heard people hate on JavaScript for one reason or another. Some people even hate on it because others hate on it. So, I was wondering to myself, why do people hate JavaScript? Like, why is JavaScript hated? Let's talk about that. Part 1. The design. First of all, let's address the elephant in the room. The weak typing. Arguably the most popular reason to hate JavaScript. Cool dude, JavaScript will do all the work for you. Convert your array to a bool, your string to an integer, and it will pretend like nothing ever happened, causing massive problems and making it very hard to track bugs. Then of course, we have the incomparably less annoying gimmick of JS, which still remains a common cause for bugs. The plus operator can concatenate strings and numbers together. At first, this does not sound like a bad idea really, but then all you have to do is that remember that JS absolutely loves to convert strings to numbers without your agreement. So, if you forget to explicitly convert a string to number, it sure will subtract it correctly. But when you try adding another number up, suddenly your variable is way bigger and in fact still a string. Then the less known issue. JavaScript is actually sentient enough to place semicolons for you. As with anything in JavaScript's design, it does not immediately sound like a bad idea. Then you suddenly realize you want to return some complex values, so you leave return on one line and put the actual value on the other line. And if you did that, congratulations, your function returns undefined. Following our little slander, we must mention the wondrous world of ECMAScript specification. It is a magical place where nothing makes sense, but you still pretend to understand it, not to draw any unwanted attention to yourself. A lot of people despise the confusion between undefined, null, and nan. Is there anything really left to say, knowing that not a number value is actually a number in JavaScript? If you accidentally generated nan in your code somewhere, be sure it will propagate through every action you take with it. And suddenly, the cake you wanted is nan. And the plate for that cake is nan. And the table is nan. You're also a nan. Am I a nan? I don't know. It doesn't spare anything. Also, JavaScript takes an interesting take on object-oriented programming, to put it lightly. Now you see, prototype inheritance is not initially a bad thing on itself, nor the dynamic object-oriented programming. But a lot of people get confused and ultimately refuse to give up on classes. So the JS committee or whatever evil organization controls this present of a language decided to do a little trolling, so to say. You can have classes now. Sounds great. Well, nobody said that classes have to be actual classes. They are flippin' functions. Enjoy your stay here at JavaScript. Take a cup of nan and a slice of undefined. To conclude the specific design problems of JavaScript, let's take a wider look. What's wrong with JavaScript at this scale? In the most general way, in the way that any JavaScript program will run. Well, you see, the problem is that it runs. No, no, I mean that it runs, like whether you want it or not. It will take any measures not to stop the execution or carry on whatever unholy abomination it would produce. Of course, it will stop most of the time. But stopping points is not guaranteed to be the bug itself. Cannot access property of undefined? Well, here's a whole code base for you to search to find what unholy piece of code causes that. Here's a gorilla hologram in case you get nervous. Have fun! Now that we talked about JavaScript as a language, let's move on to part 2. The community. We all know that JavaScript programmers are creative people and will always make new projects and update them. And sometimes it's too much. Have you heard that web developers don't go on vacations? I have the answer to why they don't. Upon getting back to work, they will have to learn new modern set of frameworks and tools. The world of JavaScript is just too dynamic sometimes. <laughs> Get it? The dy dynamic, you see? We should also address the varying tendency of new JavaScript developers. They love elegant code. And of course, it's not a bad thing, I can even claim it's a pretty good trait to have. The problem arises when their love for elegancy meets the harsh reality of how code works. Your elegant one-liner can run slower than three lines of for loop. Now I know what you're thinking, that is indeed 1984. But when the time comes, one must make a choice. And sadly, some people would still choose elegancy. Let's move on to part 3, 
the abouts of JS. Have you ever thought that JS is somewhat forced in web development? No, no, I know that you, my dear viewer, can make a web server in assembly. There are no doubts, I know you can. But it does not overshadow the fact that it's easier to set up JavaScript for web dev than Python or C Sharp. Now, we're all programmers here. With a bit of work, we can make Lua work with OpenGL directly. But let's be real, people choose JS significantly more than other languages, partly because of this reason. And some people don't. What side do I take? Well, it depends on who I'm trolling today. And I saved dessert for you guys. Of course it's the bloat of JS frameworks. You don't like how Unity is bloated so your simple game isn't as optimized as you wished it would be? Well, guess what? The bloat is coming to the programming languages directly. Only today for 4 dollars Don't miss your chance to add 5 more gigabytes to your Node modules. Hmm. But do you know what is not hated? This video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is a huge online community for learning with countless inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning new skills and wants to explore their limits of creativity and learn new skills. For example, you want to learn programming? Skillshare has got you covered. Or maybe you want to learn how to edit and create your own videos. Well, I recently checked out this course by Halise Narvez about editing videos with Adobe Premiere Pro and I learned terms and tricks I would have never figured out otherwise. It honestly doesn't matter if you're a complete beginner or a hardened learning veteran. Skillshare has something for you. And here's the great part. The first 1000 people to click the link in the description get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So what are you waiting for exactly? Go check out this amazing platform filled with even more amazing courses and start your learning journey today. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave your opinions in the comments below. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next episode. Zaipkai out.